It was just boredom, really, you know. Um, lack of anything better to do. And not, not, not being... We weren't sporty. We weren't outdoors type people. We just... Uh, yeah, it was just... It, when all his friends were doing that, we we found ourselves at a loose end, and um, we were all into music. You know, I, I was into the Beatles and Queen growing up. They were the first bands I was really into, and I just remember being. I would spend my money on on cassettes rather than uh, Aztec camera. That was the first seven inch I got. Like we would just spend money on cassettes or, or stuff like that rather than um, rather than anything else. I, and I guess it was, but it wasn't. It wasn't a lifestyle choice. It was just when you're a kid, you're quite black and white, and you're just interested in what you're interested in. There's no, there's no agenda. And I guess that just is what led the foundations for it. And then later on, as a, just as a bored teen, you know, it was like a, you just climbed the rope, I guess. Yeah, well, we'd got like we once got electric an electric guitar for uh, for Christmas just because I thought it would, not because we could play, I just thought that it looked kind of cool. It was something to take into school. In the shed first. There was oh, yeah. there, we used to hang out in the shed. This is really boring, but like when I was when we were kids, we used to hang out in the shed quite a lot because we used to, like to turn it into a house or an, or an office or, or we used to sleep in the shed a lot as kids yeah. for some reason. That was so, that was so exciting. We found an electric guitar in there, which I guess my mum had for many years and it, it was kind of a cool guitar actually like a really beat up like uh really cheap crappy thing but like we were actually scared of the case though weren't we? we thought that we were like nosferatu it was, were in it yeah like a car we used to say it was a coffin yeah, but, but then we uh that's kind of we, we we would play with it a lot and we just ended up wanting a real one like not a real one and then we got so, some cheap guitars one christmas it was cool i think that when you get into like you know, when you really get into music as well, like, you know, when we got to, like, um, 12, and you know, like, 13 and 14 and stuff, and you really get into, like, like more kind of punk rock bands and stuff, then it's, I don't know, it's just the next progression is always to start playing, you know, you just start to want to play, you know. And so all those bands preached or espoused the ethic that anyone can do it, really, and, uh, and DIY was the main thing, and so... It just, you know, as, as I said, when we were, we were kids and we were into Queen and you just couldn't ever imagine being able to play like that. And then you get into the Pistols and you're like, oh, the Ramones, and you're like, wow, I, I can actually do this, you know. And it's just such a, it sounds like a cliched story, it's such a typical story, but it's really, that's all it was. Then we built, we built Ross a drum kit out of just, you know, bits and pieces that we, like, managed to collect and, uh, he just started playing drums. Um, just for like, it was just like we just used to pl like practice in my bedroom, just for just for a lack of anything better to do. And it was fun, you know. We used to have like fun in like you know just like recording stuff on like one of my f one of my friends had like an old reel to reel tape recorder, and you could record two tracks on it. So we used to just like record like you know like Ramones covers and stuff like that on there and then um, eventually like one Christmas we got a far track which was kind of like the most when we were 14 we got a far track for Christmas which was kind of the most amazing like present ever and we just used to spend just used to spend all our time really just like just recording demos in the bedroom messing you know? around with like the sound on the on the far track it, just because it was such a fascinating thing to own like it felt like it really opened a lot of doors to you and that um, you had no excuse not to master it because, it, you know, it was just, yeah, you, it, it, it provided us with, like, hours of being able to just, even just messing around with sounds and stuff. And I think that's, that's kind of, um, you felt like you had to justify having it by always recording, always writing and, like, it, made us quite not I'm not going to say prolific because it was just, we were just fooling around but just we were always doing something to do with it from that point on and then after that like obviously like you know once you've got like into the recording side of things um it, you know like that just snowballs and we ended up like collecting bits and pieces of like vintage recording gear over like the next few years and then when we got to the point where me and Gary was at university we like really didn't like college at all you know like we weren't into college and we weren't 
into we were like working jobs and stuff so we just decided to open a like a practice room and a recording studio in Wakefield that was you know it was quite a grand idea really just in this like um, this old abandoned like mill so it had like room to have to put gigs on there and to like record demos and we just recorded a demo in there and um that like as soon as we pretty much as soon as we recorded the demo we got a record deal with Wichita recordings and that is the history of the cribs up until you know yeah, yeah. it was a little later than that because um i was too young it, 1989 or 1988 i believe one of one of the two years and it was yeah. somewhere in my heart which is just a, a great pop song but i was i was only i was only a little kid i didn't i didn't think it was cool i didn't i didn't know anything about it i was just I used to hear it on the jukebox at the at the holiday camp, and and it was my favourite song that summer. And it ended up being the first record I ever got. It was it was really cool. It was kind of out of date by the time I got it, and we went to Boots, which is a chemist, and um, that's where we ordered the seven inch from for some reason. And I I didn't know what who it was by or or what the song was, and I had to sing it for the woman behind the counter. <laughs> I had to just be stood there singing it. Why were we not? A re why did we not go to a record shop to get it anyway? Why were we a chemist? Yeah, it was developed just, from the holiday. Oh yeah, that that is that that is that's the truth. That's probably yeah, that's probably right.